Hello, dear students. My name is Volkovich Boris Grigorievich, and in our today's lecture, we're going to cover three topics. The first topic is have something done. This construction uh, is connected with the passive voice we started in the previous lecture, and it's like a logical continuation of it. The next subject is uh, the complex subject and the complex object, which are all connected with passive constructions. Now let's get started. The construction have something done is rather simple, and it is used to say that we arrange for someone else to do something for us. It means заказать, нанять, пригласить кого-либо сделать что-либо. The past participle, done, repaired, cleaned, etc., comes after the object. So the whole formula of this construction looks like this. Have, just, just a sec, I will turn it on, yes, have, object, and plus participle, past participle. So you use this construction when you personally do not do some action and somebody does it for you. Let's look at some examples. The first example. I have my coat cleaned every month. Я даю пальто химчистку каждый месяц. So it means that somebody cleans your coat for you and you just pay money for it. Then, we had the roof repaired yesterday. Вчера нам починили крышу. So, uh, it's, it wasn't you who repaired the roof, but these were special people who came to your place, home, and repaired your roof. They are having the house painted at the moment. Им сейчас красят дом. So, they pay money for their house to be painted. How often do you have your car serviced? Как часто вы проходите техосмотр? So you don't do it yourself. You don't service your car by yourself. You go to a special garage or something, and they do, uh, do it for you. Another example. She has just had her car cleaned. Ей только что помыли машину. So it wasn't she who cleaned her car. These were special car washes. Uh, in this construction, there are two peculiarities I wanted to pay your attention to. The first thing is that if we want to uh, use the tense we want, I mean the grammar tense, we use only the verb to have, and the verb to have uh, forms the tense we need. So if you need continuous form, you put the verb to have in this form are having, had, past simple, present simple, have. And also, when we translate such sentences in Russian, it's uh, the second peculiarity. We use, like, неопределенно uh, личные предложения in Russian language, починили. In English, as you can see, they can't say so, because the language lacks this means of uh, expressions, of uh, grammar structures, and in English we have to use this construction. In Russian we use неопределённое личное предложение. Please pay attention that sometimes the model is used to say that something, often something not nice, happened to someone. He had all his money stolen, у него украли все деньги. George had his nose broken in a fight. Georgiu разбили нос в драке. So, we also can say, we use can, this construction when we want to say something bad, talking about other people. Now you can see some exercises by using which you can practice your uh, grammar knowledge. Please pay attention that the 22nd exercise goes here, then the 23rd begins and goes here, then the 24th, and it finishes here. Now you can...
pause the video because on the next slides you will see the keys. These are the keys to the exercises so you can check yourself. Actually, that was all I wanted to say about the construction have something done. As I told you, it's not very difficult. Uh, and now we're going to talk about more difficult construction, the complex object. The complex object, the objective with infinitive construction, consists of a noun in the common case, or a pronoun in the objective case, and the infinitive. It is mostly translated into Russian by an object clause. The formula looks like this. Subject plus predicate plus noun or pronoun plus infinitive. Let's look at some examples. I want mother, her, to help me. Я хочу, чтобы мама, то есть она, помогла мне. They expect the steamer to leave tonight. Они ожидают, что пароход отойдет сегодня вечером. So, as you can see, we use, we have subject, predicate, noun, pronoun, in this construction. Uh, here are the cases when we use the complex object. The first case is with the verbs of the mental activity, to know, to think, to consider, to believe, to find, in the meaning of считать, полагать not находить, to expect, to suppose, значение предполагать, to imagine, to feel, to trust, to understand. And the usage of the complex object here is a more characteristic of literary style. And after the verbs to think, to consider, to find, the verb to be can be omitted. For example, I knew them to be right. Я знал, что они правы. We expect them to arrive soon. Мы ожидаем, что они скоро придут. So, please pay attention that not they, but them, is used in this construction. I find him a very clever man, or I find him to be a very clever man, and I don't consider him to be, or without to be, an honest man. So, here we can omit to be without any uh, was, uh, uh, any losses and meanings. The second case is with the verbs of declaring. These verbs are such as to pronounce, to declare, to report, etc. For example, the doctor pronounced the wound to be a slight one. Врач сказал, что рана легкая. So, we can say that the, do uh, the doctor declared that the wound was a slight one. But the usage of this complex object is more English, it makes your speech more profound, more sophisticated, and you sound more English. Of course, there are cases to say these sentences in other ways, more close to Russian equivalents, but uh, this construction is really nice and useful in your everyday speech. 3. The verbs denoting wish and intention. These words, verbs are to want, to wish, to desire, to mean, to urge, to intend or to choose in the meaning of want. He intended me to go with him to India. Он хотел, чтобы я поехала с ним в Индию. Or, I want you to stop worrying. Я хочу, чтобы ты прекратил волноваться. So, when we want somebody to do something, we can use such construction, and it will be also an example of usage of the complex object. He intended me, you, him, her. You use the corresponding pronouns in each, pronouns in each case. And don't forget about the infinitive after it. In the fourth example, we can see the examples of usage of these constructions with the ver construction with the verbs denoting feeling and emotion, like to like, to love, 
to dislike, to hate, and cannot bear. Tell me what you would like me to do. Скажи, что бы ты хотела, чтобы я сделал. So these are also the examples of this construction, and perhaps the last two examples, I mean this and this, you might have heard in the movies because they are often used in different kinds of movies. I want you to stop, I want you to come, I want you to promise. All these constructions are very frequent in everyday speech. The fifth case is the verbs denoting order and permission, including such verbs as to order, to allow, to let, to command, to encourage, to ask for, to forbid. In most cases, after these verbs, the passive infinitive is used. Let's look. The colonel ordered his men to attack. Полковник приказал своим людям наступать. The captain ordered the cases to be loaded. Капитан приказал погрузить ящики. So, in the second example, we use the passive infinitive. And it's like a mixture of two constructions, because in the beginning of the sentence we have the complex object, and in the end we have passive infinitive. The inf passive infinitive shows here that the world... Uh, all these cases will be loaded by men, so by somebody, so they cannot be loaded by themselves, and that is why we use here the passive voice. Please pay attention that if the subject of the verb and the infinitive is the same person or thing, the corresponding reflexive pronoun should be used. Он думал, что он не прав. He thought himself to be right. So if we if the first initial pronoun is he, then the next pronoun should be himself because it's the same person. Let's continue. The sixth case of uh, the of the using of this construction is when we use it after the verbs denoting sense perception, то есть чувство восприятия, to hear, to see, to watch, to feel, to observe, etc. They are always followed by the bare infinitive. Bare infinitive, go infinitive. This means the infinitive without the particle to. After these verbs, only the simple infinitive active is used. If the meaning is passive, we use participle to. Uh, we'll see the examples soon. If the process is, ex is expressed, participle 1, active or passive, is used. Let's look at these examples. I saw Brown enter the room. Я видел, как Браун вошел в комнату. I felt the blood rush into my cheeks. Я почувствовал, как кровь прилила к моим щекам. So, as you can see, the bare infinitive is used here, so we do not use the particle to because of the verbs of sense perception. As I told before, if we need passive, we use participle to. Let's look at this example. I saw the fire slowly conquered. Я видел, как пожар постепенно тушили. So, in this case, we use participle to, but the meaning is passive. And also, when we need a process, we say that he saw Fleur coming to us. On video, как Fleur подходила к нам. Participle 1 denotes, in this case, uh, the continuous action, so the action and process. And the next example, he watched his camera being repaired. Он наблюдал, как его фотоаппарат ремонтируют. It's participle one, but here, in this case, it can be either active or passive. In this way, it's passive because somebody repairs his camera for him, for him uh, and not him, he himself is doing it. 
And I also would like to pay your attention to the difference between verb plus infinitive and plus participle one in this case. Uh, the first example is, I saw him enter the shop. So I saw the whole process, the whole action, uh, starting from him opening the door, coming inside, and coming back outside of the shop. And in this example, I saw him entering the shop. I saw only the moment when he uh, entered the shop, but I know what happened next. I can presume that he went out because it's logically, but I, I'm not 100% sure. Maybe he's a robber and he, he's, go, he's going to take hostages or something, so nobody knows that. Uh, another example in this uh, situation can be, I saw them cross the road. So in this case, uh, we saw the whole process, like they came up to the pedestrian crossing, waited for the green signal on the traffic light, crossed the road successfully, and they finished it. If I say I saw them crossing the road, that means that, for example, I saw how they were crossing the road, the process, so I saw them in the middle of the road, but I didn't see the result, if they crossed the road or not. But we do hope that they did it successfully. Please pay attention that the verbs to see and to hear are followed by a cause, cause is предложение предложение, not by the infinitive construction, when they are not really verbs of sense perception, that is, when the verb to see means to understand, and the verb to hear, to learn, to be told. So here we are talking about the difference in meaning of these verbs, because these are very common verbs in English. So in this case, they do not they are not sense perception verbs. Let's look at these examples. I saw that she didn't realize the danger. Я понимал, что она не сознает опасности. So here we can't say I saw... I saw she realize the danger or something like that. Or because uh, here this is not a sense perception verb. Oh, uh, another example. I heard that he had left for the south. Я слышал, мне сказали, что он уехал на юг. Again, here we can say I heard he leave for the south because it's not sense perception. I learned, I was told by some facts that he has done so. In the second thing, we have another example. After the verbs to see and to notice, the complex object is not used with the verb to be, a clause is used in that case. I saw that he was disappointed. Я видел, что он разочарован. Again, we can't say I saw he be disappointed. It's un it's impossible to say like this. It's not logical. We noticed that all the teachers teachers were in the hall. Мы заметили, что все учителя были в зале. Again, in this case, when after the verbs to see and to notice, uh, we do not use it in the following way. Here are some exercises where you can practice your knowledge in complex object. You may pause the video because on the next slide you'll see the keys. Please read the task carefully. And these are the keys.
these are another exercises for you. Uh, now you have uh, the translation from Russian into English and uh, some jokes uh, in which you have to translate some parts from Russian into English. Just as usual, you'll see the keys on the next slide. Here you are. And now let's talk about our last topic for today's lecture, which is called the complex subject. The complex subject, it's the nominative with the infinitive construction, consists of a noun or pronoun in the nominative case and the infinitive. It is considered to be the subject of the sentence. So the whole construction is the subject of the sentence. Its Russian equivalent is, in most cases, a subordinate clause. Laser is known to be used in medicine. Известно, что лазер широко используется в медицине. So, as you can see, in Russian the structure of the sentence is completely different, and that's what makes English more laconic in comparison to Russian language, to the Russian language. As you can see, this part is known, moves here, is известно, что. Laser is known to be used in medicine. Используется, что делается. Again, in English, there is no such a particle as вся, возвратная частица вся, yes? Uh, so they have, they had to create something to use these kind of sentences. So in Russian we have "sia." In English they have the complex subject. For example, let's move on. Here we have cases of the usage of the complex subject in in a sentence. The first case is. When the following groups with the following groups of verbs in the passive, uh, the verbs describing or denoting sense perception again to see, to hear, to notice, to observe, to watch, etc. The car was seen to disappear in the distance. Видели, как машина скрылась вдали. Or she was heard, she was heard to laugh heartily. Слышно было, как она весело смеялась. As you can see, in English it's more laconic than in Russian, at least. I personally like this construction very much. Uh, with the verbs denoting mental activity, умственную активность, to think, to consider, to believe, to expect, to suppose, to know, understand, etc. He was thought to be honest and kind. Его считали честным и добрым человеком. He is considered to have been one of the most popular writers of his time. Считается, что он был одним из самых популярных писателей своего времени. And you can use any kind of sentences like this. And uh, if we compare the length of the sentences, we can say that English is really more laconic. I wouldn't say that the number of words is lesser, but the difficulty, I mean the grammatic difficulty of the sentence structure is easier from, from in my point of view in English. Like, look at this beauty. He is considered to have been one of the most, in Russian, считается, что он был одним из самых популярных писателей. So we have here uh, the subordinate clause, and it's which uh, makes the sentence more complex. While, whereas in English, we use just the complex subject, and that's it. And also, uh, it is used with the verbs to say, 
to report in the meaning of subject, to order, to ask, to allow, to state in the meaning of заявлять, and to announce in the meaning of объявлять. She is said to be working at the factory. Говорят, что сейчас она работает на заводе. The delegation is reported to have left Mo uh, Moscow. Сообщается, что делегация уже покинула Москву. Uh, as you can see, we use the infinitive with the verb after uh, the first part of this construction. And if we need to create any tense to refer to any tense, uh, we use different types of two infinitive, like just present infinitive, perfect infinitive, continuous infinitive, and so on and so forth. So if you need to refer to any tenses, you just operate with the different forms of the infinitives you know. And uh, I think it's more convenient than just using subordinate clauses in Russian. Let's continue. The infinitive and the complex object is used in all its forms and expresses a simultaneous action. He is said to live in London. Говорят, что он живет в Лондоне. So it's his state. He is the resident of London. And that is why we use present infinitive here. B. An action in progress. The water seems to be boiling. Кажется, вода кипит. So here we are speaking about the action which is going on at the moment of speaking. So we need to use continuous infinitive to prove it. Of course, this sentence looks rather strange because if the water is boiling, it's boiling. But in this case, we need to show this action in progress. And see an action prior to the action expressed by the finite verb. They are reported to have finished the construction. Сообщают, что они уже закончили строительство. It's like the present perfect tense, but it's the present perfect infinitive, and by using which we under we emphasize that the first action was that they finished the construction, and only then, after that, they reported about it. So, an action the this is the action prior to the action expressed by the finite verb. The second case is like this. The infinitive in sentences with the complex subject cannot refer to the future except usages with the verbs and word groups to expect, to be sure, certain, and to be likely. Let's look at these examples. We are sure to come to the heart of the matter. Мы обязательно доберемся до сути, до сути дела. He is expected to give us an answer tomorrow. Ожидает, что он нам даст ответ завтра. Yes, as you know, uh, these forms of infinitive, they can't refer to the future, actually, basically. And that's why uh, the infinitive in such sentences, it cannot refer to the future, but only with these verbs, like to expect, to be sure, certain, and to be likely. In this case, it can be, it can refer to the future. Let's look at another word groups. To be likely, вероятно. To be unlikely, маловероятно, вряд ли. To be certain, to be sure, несомненно, обязательно, бесспорно, непременно. He is unlikely to know her address. Маловероятно, вряд ли, что он знает ее, его, ее, его, его. Нет, ее. Her address, yes. He is sure to be asked about it. 
И вор наверняка об этом спросят. Again, it's a passive infinitive, which is used here because uh, there will be people who will ask him about it. Pairs of synonyms. To seem, to appear. Казаться по-видимому. To prove, to turn out. Оказываться. To happen, to chance. Случаться. They seem to have quite forgotten us already. Они, кажется, совершенно нас забыли. The perfect infinitive is used to show the completion of the action. That they completely have forgotten us. Uh, another example. The first experiment proved to be a success. Первый опыт оказался удачным. So, proved to be, like, он доказал, что он будет, был успешным. Only yesterday we happened to meet the man. Только вчера мы случайно встретили этого человека. So, we had a chance. Нам случилось встретить этого человека. Negative forms are used... Uh, Like these examples, don't seem, doesn't prove, didn't happen, plus infinitive. And is, are, not, likely, plus infinitive. He doesn't seem to know this subject. Он, кажется, не знает этого предмета. He didn't prove to be a very experienced engineer. Он оказался не очень опытным инженером. He didn't happen to be there at that time. Случилось так, что его не было там в это время. He is not likely to come today. Он, вероятно, не придет сегодня. Again, look at the construction, I mean, the grammar structures of the English sentence and Russian sentence. In Russian we have some words like кажется, оказался, случилось, так вероятно. Whereas in English... It's very strict construction, which makes uh, the sentence not so complex as in the Russian variant. Please pay attention that if the verbs to prove, to seem, to appear, in the meaning of выглядеть, производить впечатление, are followed by adjectives or nouns with the adjectives. The verb to be after them can be omitted. She proved to be very clever, or she proved very clever, and he appears an experienced teacher, so we can say he appears to be an experienced teacher, but that is not necessary. And compare, he seems ill, он выглядит больным. He seems to be ill, он кажется болен. So, in this case, uh, in both cases, we think that he is ill, but in this case, we are not as sure as in this case, but they are very similar, actually. But there is a slight difference in meaning. I think you should know it. Here are the exercises for you to check your knowledge, to check your understanding. In the first exercise, you have to open the brackets using the correct form of the infinitive. And in the next exercise, you have to translate the words in brackets. You may add all the parts of the construction you need to make complete good sentences. Now you can pause the video because there will be answers on the next slide. These are the keys as well. This is one more exercise for you. It has two parts. 
uh, the second part is a little bit more difficult than the first one because it requires more uh, types of complex subject as the first one but the task is again the same you have to open the brackets using the correct form of the infinitive so here you have to think about the grammar tense which you need in each of the sentences and these are the keys so you can check yourself and one more exercise here just everything is yours just a translation from Russian into English so don't forget that English is more of a conic than Russian and try to avoid unnecessary Russian things in English sentences. On the next slide you'll see the keys and uh, afterwards you can correct your mistakes. These are the keys. And uh, this is the end of the lecture. I hope you found it useful. Thank you for your attention. And uh, I wish you to stay healthy, wealthy, and wise. See you next time. Thank you.